Koichi Gara Salga Rao Lee, historian, writer, and state prize winner. He's the author of 45 books, 30 of which tell about historical events of the Kazakh people. In scientific works, the researcher gives answers to such questions as Why is this or that judgment wrong? Where is the truth? What is the truth? He gives evidence. The next generation should make a detailed study of his works. In this program, we will talk about traditional Kazakh upbringing and the problems of researching history. Compassion, good deeds, permissible and forbidden. The traditional Kazakh education is based on these four foundations. How would you explain their meaning? The base of education is laid in childhood. It is said, homeland begins with the family. Because it is the family that gives traditional education. A child who has received a good upbringing in the family will grow up as a worthy person. From birth to a certain time, children are under the care and upbringing of their mother and grandmother. Later, when the boys become older, fathers and older brothers take up their upbringing, and the girls remain with their mothers and grandmothers. These are our traditions. But most importantly, both girls and boys should be raised by the mother. This woman, while feeding a baby with her milk, putting him in a cradle, singing songs and telling tales, instills love of native language, culture and traditional national values. When the mother teaches human values that form baby's personality while narrating folk epos. And the father teaches a grown-up boy to be courageous, introduces him into adulthood, teaches to protect his homeland, to participate in solving the problems of the people. Therefore, the Kazakhs have such concept. For a child, mother means mercy, father means courage, grandfather is a mentor, grandmother means care, brother means protection, daughter-in-law is a like-minded person, and environment is soil. Parents should not try to bring up their children the way they were brought up, but they should strive to make their children better and stronger than they themselves. It is important to remember that the time the children live in is much more difficult than their parents' time. Magjan Jumabayev, poet. <laughs> Education is based on four principles – compassion, good deeds, permissible and forbidden. What is compassion? This implies not to do harm to absolutely any living being in nature, the environment. For example, they say do not, do not ruin the birds' nests, and so on. As for good deeds, it means correcting the harm done to nature. For example, if you fix a destroyed bird's nest, it will be a good thing. If you water a thirsty animal, it will be a good deed. This is to pick scattered scrums of bread, help the poor, orphans. Do you understand? Some people interpret compassion and good deeds as religious concepts, but this is far from this opinion. The same applies to the permitted, halal and the forbidden, haram. But it is much more than edible or inedible. The same food may be a forbidden fruit if it has been stolen. Money or clothing may be prohibited if it is not obtained in an honest way, and so on. From an early age, from the cradle, child absorbs all these values from the parents. Parents' initial task is to educate and teach goodness. Gabidan Mustafin, writer. Do I need to give advice to a child? 
No, the child does not need your instructions. But to be a good example for children is simply a must. For example, adults teach their children not to cheat, that this is not good and that, in general, is correct. At the same time, a child hears how an adult lies speaking via telephone at home, saying that they are outside. Is that not a lie? Of course a lie. What will the child who saw such an example do? Of course, he will not so much listen to the words of his elders as follow their example and will repeat them in similar situations. Or they say, don't smoke. But at the same time, they themselves smoke and a child sees it. They say, do not drink, but they themselves come home drunk. After that, what values of all these teachings can be spoken of? Well, and if instead of constant teachings, one shows example, adhering to the four canons that we are talking about, the child will certainly copy the behavior of his parents, will do good deeds. This is the first. Secondly, language is what makes a person a human. Now people spend a lot of money for language courses, but in fact, the root of the problem is that parenting is not right in the family. All starts with the family. If parents speak with their child in a native language, they will transmit the good qualities and the right examples of behavior. Then it will always be imprinted in the memory of the child, and there will be no need to say, learn your language. The problem will be solved by itself. Therefore, if now someone needs to be blamed for this omission, then it will definitely be the parents. Language, educational tool. Je suis Bec Aymoutov, writer. If mother is mercy, father is courage, grandfather is a mentor, grandmother is a care, brother is protection, daughter-in-law is a like-minded person, and the environment is soil, then how important is the role of grandfather and grandmother in traditional Kazakh education? It is impossible to emphasize someone. All are interconnected here. What you said is a very short description. For example, mother is a mercy, and this role can be described in detail for a very long time. But the main thing is that mother is a source of education. It is she who maintains the high status of her husband, the head of the family. It is not for nothing that the Kazakhs say, if you treat a father like a king, then your son will be a prince. And in our time there has been talk about gender equality, there are women who don't respect the father of their child. For example, when I did some kind of trick in my childhood, my mother said, I will tell everything to your father. When I heard this phrase, it seemed to be awful, because I loved my father very much and did not want to disappoint him. Therefore, I tried not to repeat my mistakes. If you praise the father in the eyes of the children, they will be afraid to lose his trust. Caring is kindness. The main duty of a woman, her maternal duty, is to give a birth to a child and raise him. But we made women to ride horses, graze sheep, drive a tractor, plow the ground, gave them folders and sent them to the office. You see, we made them work in areas that were not characteristic of them. And the children, meanwhile, were left without education. At present, the child is raised by TV. Of course, I don't mean that our mothers and talented sisters should stand at the stove, constantly being at home. If a woman has education, abilities, then no one will limit her. However, I do not think that all this should be above the upbringing of the child, who should become a person tomorrow. The great mothers of the past, like Domala Kana, Karashash Anna, Begim Anna, raised citizens who were the backbone of the country. With their human qualities and valiant fulfillment of their maternal duty, they raised true citizens and became respected among the people. A child determines whether he will become a son or a slave. Akhmet Baitosinov, state and public figure. A child who was brought up according to the main canons of which we are talking about, before making a mistake, will always hear the voice of her mother, who from childhood put concepts about compassion and kindness into him. 
Such a person will not make harm to the outside world. What are the ways to preserve the values of traditional education amid globalization? To fix something, you need to understand what was the original era. The first thing to do is return to the traditional origins. What does it mean? To put it simply, then we should make Kazakh a Kazakh. We are talking about the fact that the environment for the child is the soil in which he grows. In ancient times, it was the environment that brought up a good person and a bad one. For example, in the village I grew up, I treated elders like they were fathers for me, and those who were younger were uncles or brothers for me. There was no division, and your good and evil will not go unnoticed. You ask, what are the advantages of this? For example, nowadays, if an adult makes comments towards a child, he will answer, are you my father to instruct me? But in the ancient time, it was not typical. Children were brought up by the whole village. This is what the environment means. Builders have such a tool, the straightening tool. They say that a curved board does not adjoin to a straightened tool. Similarly, the child was brought up by the whole village. He grew up as a good, worthy person. The Almighty, on the other hand, made man more intelligent than all other living beings. Therefore, man is obliged, first of all, before God, before society, before his parents, to live the life of a worthy person. Do not commit awful acts. Do not live life like a useless animal, who forms the core of a worthy person. Education of grandfathers, grandmothers, parents and environment. In our time, for example, the daughter-in-law was the closest person for younger boy and girl. Both girls and boys shared secrets with the daughter-in-law. And mothers and grandmothers, in turn, were engaged in the education of girls and taught them housekeeping gentleness and tidiness, and the daughter-in-law helped in the search for a worthy groom. The daughter-in-law is a like-minded person and well-wisher. A brother was a man who taught courage. People say, if you have an older brother, you have support. And if we talk in detail about the role of each relative, then this will be a whole lecture. That is, it turns out that no one should stay away. Nobody owes. Therefore, we say that the environment is this straightening tool. Try to have good morals rather than good laws. Morality is the most important law. Pythagoras, philosopher. Generally speaking, our people become very boastful. Where does bragging come from? The root of bragging is injustice. Not only the Kazakhs, but in general the whole Turkic society in former times did not have such boasting. Mahmoud Kashkari wrote that the Turks, after making great feats, returned as if they have done nothing of the kind. And when they were reminded of their great deeds, they only answered that they had done what they had to do, and in their place everyone would have done exactly the same. But what then does boasting begin with? from the fact that there is no justice in society. For example, when someone's action goes unnoticed, or even worse, when people attribute the achievement of one person to someone else. And then the indignation begins. Hey, I did it. But no one takes this into account, and all the honors go to another. At first there is a disappointment, then it becomes propaganda, and finally it turns to boasting. So the ruler goes astray, not because he is not wise, but because injustice is happening around. Man is seduced not because he is rich or poor, but because he loses his dignity and shame. And nobody can take this way, only we can abandon it. And all this affects the development of society.
Until recently, others wrote our story. Now we do it ourselves. But are we going in the right direction? Now we are not looking for anything new. We are not investigating our history and we are not writing any new history. To do this, we do not even have the opportunity. None of historians has explored the times that preceded the emergence of not just Turkic tribes, but even Kazakhs. The only good deed that we did after gaining independence was that we studied and reported to people data on violence and crimes committed against the people during the Soviet regime and the Tsarist regime. On the basis of this direction, good specialists have appeared. And it is right, but the history of the Kazakhs is not limited to only these two periods. Therefore, we must start from the beginning. Only when we examine it, we can answer the question, why is this happening now? But now we cannot answer this question because we proceed only from the newest history and we have nothing to compare them with. The advantage of history is that it enables us to compare. And the person who compares and comes to any opinion is not mistaken. Not only ours, but the whole history of mankind is a victim of an ideology that distorts facts. The whole root of evil revolves around wars. In history, we see many effects of propaganda of the need for armed conflict. The sublimation of the cult of individuals who organized attacks on peaceful countries and exterminated ordinary people. Such rulers of ideology are often set an example. Take for example Caesar, Alexander the Great, Napoleon, Charlemagne, Richard the Lionheart or Genghis Khan. What is history, in plain language? This is a chronology of events of different time periods, biographies of especially significant people who lived in a particular era. That is, it is an opportunity to study good examples from the past and develop further. It is an opportunity to study and not repeat the bitter mistakes that people who lived before us made. But our history has only the victories of empires. The 19th century left us a concept according to which only settled peoples created a progressive civilization while the Central Asian people were supposedly in either stagnation, barbarism or savagery. The worst thing about this concept was not that it was wrong, but that it was proposed as an achievement of science that could not be criticized. Lev Gumilov, scientist. We no longer perceive the war, pain and suffering as the torment of entire nations, as a monster that makes us live in fear, lose our loved ones and perish. If we hear that war is going on somewhere, we treat it as if it should be so. But man was created by the Almighty with special love and respect, and therefore was endowed with reason. But wars made us animals, and if we are compared to a predatory beast, we like it. We glorify the conquerors and do not sympathize with the conquered. If the younger generation were told about the suffering and torment of the inhabitants of the conquered countries, if they talked about the despair of people and the thousands of destroyed fates, then there would not have been all these wars in the world. Are there any obstacles to this study of our history now? There are no restrictions. 
But there are neither scientists nor schools that find forgotten or purposefully hidden pages of our history and write about them objectively. Judge for yourself. Not one of the ancient scientists graduated from the university because in ancient times there were simply no universities. Although the creator made people the same, their abilities were always different. Someone is strong, someone is smart, the other is stupid, the third is a coward, the fourth is courageous. But the abilities of smart people are divided into two types, those who perform flawlessly someone else's tasks and creators. It is precisely people with creative abilities that are special. They brought religion, science to the world. And they had their own students. Now the status of a teacher has lost any significance. People listen to my lectures and then they say that they are my students. But think for yourself. If I go and give a lecture once or twice to the parliament members, will they become my followers? And what does the word follower mean? This is a person who receives everything that his teacher knew and continues his activities further. Only in this case, science continues its life. You have completed more than 30 scientific discoveries. Did they get a decent evaluation? No, they did not. Otherwise, they would have long been introduced into scientific activity. But taking offense at this is not worth it, because I received all my titles and honors for four books that were written during the Soviet time. Ancestors and Descendants, Drevo, Tree of Life, The Multiple-Sided History of Kazakhs, and The Kazakhs. I received a state award for them. They were published in 30,000, 60,000 and 100,000 copies. All Kazakhs read them. Everyone knew Koishi Gara Salgaraoli. Now my work is being printed by state order. Previously, 1,000 or 2,000 copies were available. Now they are 5,000 copies and all of them are being sent to libraries. But all the same, people do not know who Koishi Gara Salgaraoli is and what books he wrote, because there is no propaganda. <laughs> Is there something I did not ask about? What would you like to tell? Now what we need to do is form a national educational system. Universities used to be the place where advanced specialists were trained. But now it is necessary to make sure that, at the same time, universities prepare people and personalities. Young people must be taught what is really useful to them in life. And people who graduate from national universities must first absorb national education. Only such specialists will try to benefit their people. There is a following practice. For example, one scientist studies one topic all his life and makes a discovery. Then he goes to the government to get support, to develop it further. He can devote his whole life to this. And the MPs give his work to foreigners for examination. They decide and reject, destroy hard work, and then take and use it themselves. And then how would he prove that this work was his? But we have our own good specialists, scientists, who, though they are not geniuses, but know what is right and what is not. Any foreign scientist, if he is the winner of the Nobel Prize, without knowing the Kazakh language, Kazakh literature, Kazakh history, at least at the level of the average historian, literary critic, philologist, simply cannot feel and understand it. Therefore, we shall give to our scientists. They can say if it is suitable or not, but we cannot even do it. Thank you for your time. Thank you.